So if you're like me and you often buy new games and often change up your game room or style of game room, you move things around and sometimes you pull something out and go, oh, I haven't seen this in a while or I kind of forgot I had this. And every once in a while you're like, I, I wonder where this thing's at as far as value. So for me today, I pulled out a bunch of different games and there was like a list of a few of them that I had no idea kind of went up in value or I'd say were at least worth more than $20 that in my brain, I didn't really think they would be worth more. So let's go into those. I would say games that uh, you might not have known went up in value a little bit. The first one is a 1989 game by Culture Brain named Little Ninja Brothers. Now this game isn't really a game I put a ton of time into as a kid. I definitely played it and I have to be honest, looking back on it, I kind of confused it with Kung Fu Heroes a little bit as well. I'd say it's more of a RPG, even action RPG type of game mixed with some Kung Fu Heroes elements. There's also some other different types of games and gameplay style in this video game, but I'd say more on the more, it's definitely more, again, of an RPG style video game. When it comes to the value of this game, it was one of the more shocking ones to me, I'd say. And again, that's my fault because just like the gameplay of Kung Fu Heroes, how I was intermixing the games in my head without realizing it, I must have also kind of locked it in there as a lower tier priced video game, even though, by the way, I actually like Kung Fu Heroes more than Little Ninja Brothers. But aside from that, the price, I thought if I had to guess at the time before looking, I would have said probably a $15 game or so. To my surprise, Little Ninja Brothers by Culture Brain is now an $85 game. So if you look at Flying Warriors based off the cover, it looks pretty epic. To me personally, I don't know any backstory to any sort of lore if there is any to Flying Warriors, but in my brain, when I look at this, I think this has got to have been an anime show somewhere down the line or a superhero show down the line somewhere else on a cartoon show, something like that. Again, I'm not even sure about that. But as far as the game, it's a pretty good, solid side-scrolling video game. And it also, in certain levels, boss levels type of things, turn into a fighting game. I don't really like the fighting game mechanics on here, but then again, you know, I don't feel like many people really dove into loving fighting games and until I'd say Street Fighter came out, Street Fighter 2, but I do like the side-scrolling levels on this video game. It actually kind of a little bit reminds me of Fist of the North Star, which I know does have a lore to it. I played Fist of the North Star quite a bit as a kid, and I have much more nostalgia for Fist of the North Star than I would have ever thought until seeing it gameplay again recently, and I was like, wow, I played that game a lot as a kid. But as far as Flying Warriors goes, a pretty good game. I like, I say, 60% of the game and not the other half of the style gameplay. But when it comes to value of this game, nothing absolutely crazy. It's a $22 game. I would have guessed a little lower, again, because been hunting for near a decade now on YouTube. I used to find these all the time for five bucks. And last I checked, that's what it was still around. So 22 bucks, cool, I'd say worth it. How about an LJN game from 1991? We're talking about Beetlejuice. For being lumped in in the category of LJN games, I would say Beetlejuice isn't that bad. It's not my favorite type of gameplay. I'd say the sprites are much smaller than I normally like in my platformers or side scrollers. When it comes to those type of games, I love a good like medium to large sprite. And I'd say Beetlejuice in this game, he looks pretty wimpy and pretty weak. But overall, I'd say maybe a six out of 10 video game, which I'd say is pretty high for an LJN game at the time. And when it comes to price, this one again, isn't that wild, but it's about 30 to $35. And I checked even about a year ago. And I remember most flea markets, swap meets, even the ones who knew what they had, were charging like 15 to 20 bucks max on this. So for even that, for me to look at this, I saw it again just recently, just last year, not this copy, but a different copy my buddy picked up. I was like, oh, it's a 15 to $20 game. So to my surprise, when I just pulled it out and it was 30 to 35, there you go. Didn't know. Speaking to the title of the video, there you go. This next game is a banger of a game. I'm not talking just value, but absolutely fun, brilliant video game. Mario's missing. It's pretty boring.
I'd say Mario is Missing and some of the other Mario learning type games from back in the days may have been the biggest troll on little kids ever because as you know, as retro gamers or new gamers, and if you don't know, back in the day, you didn't really see a lot of gameplay before you played a lot of games. You just kind of went with the cover art. And Mario is Missing looks freaking epic. You got Luigi on the front. What is this, a precursor to Luigi's Mansion? Luigi's out there in front of a castle, presumably Bowser's castle, looking for Mario. Well, by the way, Mario's clearly right behind him, but Bowser's pulling him away. When you're a kid, you're not gonna see this and think this is a learning game where I'm gonna have to go take different pieces from history and go place them in the right time periods. No, you weren't gonna think that. So it was a big troll. Even some of the ones that you might've figured were Mario learning games, still just putting Mario on there. Every kid was like, come on, this one could be good. You trolled us, you trolled us good. And this game, it's about 25 bucks. I thought it would be a little bit lower. This is probably one of the only ones in the thing that, that should be a lot lower. This should be like a five. They, they should probably pay you to take this. Before I go on, I just want to let you know the last game I'm going to talk about is definitely the biggest surprise to me. But the next one is a game called Treasure Master. Treasure Master is a game that has gotten some crap over the years from video game reviewers, and I'd say pretty justifiably so, but there are things about this game that I think are redeemable. For one, I'd say that, yeah, it is smaller sprites, which I don't love. I do love the look of your character. I love his flipped up bill hat. I love the way he jumps, and I love the movements in the game. One thing I also give it a little bit credit for, which not a lot, but yes, a good amount of games were doing on the Nintendo, there was a lot of different power-ups and ships that you could get in, and that kind of transform your character, which and then transforms the gameplay. You know, you games got games like Little Nemo Dream Master, where you turn into the certain animals and it creates a whole new element of gameplay. Same with this game. No, you don't turn into things, but you ride different ships and have different styles and gameplay abilities and availability, which makes the game much better in my opinion. This game right here is a $21 game. This is one of those, which I mentioned earlier, one of those games that I would see all the time at swap meets and flea markets back in the day. And if you've been doing it for a long time, like I have, I think this video would make a lot more sense to you because these are one of those games that you would just see everywhere and you were like, nobody cares about this. You couldn't even give it away. It's $3. It's like, sure, I guess I'll take that. But 21 bucks, pretty good game. Maybe I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. I don't know why now all of a sudden I'm ranking the games, but I'd say a worth it game. The next one's probably one of the cutest games I've ever played, and that's Kickle Cubicle. Now I have to say that I will throw my hat in the ring for a lot of IREM games. One of the biggest ones I'd say would be Hammering Harry. It's just a game I absolutely love. And I think IREM has a pretty good track record of various consoles and various abilities to make some really great video games. This one is no different. It is a puzzle game and it is one of the cutest, happiest little puzzle games. There is not much, too much depth as far as how you play the video game. You kick things over. Maybe that's why they call the characters Kickle Cubicle or name the game Kickle Cubicle. I can't remember if that's the characters' names. Probably not, but the gameplay is pretty straightforward. You kick ice blocks most of the time into various places to then defeat levels. Pretty fun game, but again, I think what holds this game down is the soundtrack. Not a lot of people talk about the soundtrack. The soundtrack goes perfectly with what you see on the screen. The visual representation of the game is perfect to the audio representation because they just marry each other in such perfect harmony because they create the ultimate sense of happiness. This game is a $26 game, and I'd say definitely, definitely worth getting. I thought this game was cheaper, but I'd say this game is value-wise, as far as what you're going to get out of it, worth much more. You know, like a fire and ice. That game's expensive, but I feel like validly expensive. Well, not as expensive, but you know what I mean. You get enjoyment worth out of your money. And by far, the most shocking and final game for me that I didn't know was worth, I almost didn't look this one up because it's like a garbage bin game in my mind. Fisher Price Firehouse Rescue.
Out of all the games in here, this may be the worst game. Well, I'm gonna say it is absolutely the worst game. I get it, it's Fisher Price. It was made probably for like very small children, not just for kids, very small children. The gameplay is basic. I've seen gameplays of people beating this game in five to six minutes. You drive around, top down view, and then you go save people from potential, remind you, potential burning buildings. And this game, this game, is over $40. There's a lot of games in here that are in that $20 range, above 20, 20 to $30 range that are much better. This one is uh, definitely one of those games, I'd say to be on the lookout for and don't pass it up because it's one of those ones you'll see out there and be like, this is worth nothing and literally just skip over it with your fingers when you're scrolling through a big stack of NES games. Value wise, worth it because it's a $41 game. Gameplay, literally I would say it's a, a, a 50 cent game at most and pretty much just takes up space. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you guys have any of those games that you just did not know was worth money that you wouldn't think was worth money. And this may be different for everyone. Some people probably watch this and it's like, duh, we keep up on prices. Those games have always been expensive or they may not be. But really it just comes down to where you hunted and how you've hunted your whole life. And these are ones that never were valuable, valuable to me back in the day. And apparently now they have some, they hold some merit. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Let me know down below what you guys thought of the video and uh, some of your little secret secret game finds that are worth money. That doesn't even make sense, but I never do on this channel. Thank you guys. Keep the pursuit alive. That's not my outro statement, but I just wanted to say it.